Hello everyone, it's Pal Ponder on Weather. In this video, it's time to gear up for severe weather outbreak over the next three to four days with large hail, damaging winds, and a tornado threat. So if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Here's the overall watches and warnings as of this morning, uh, April the 7th here. And we've got a very strong low level jack that's gonna be uh, initiating these storms. And it's also gonna be creating some higher winds uh, for the next uh, three or four days. They've already got wind advisories and watches out for portions of uh, Colorado uh, into Kansas, into the Oklahoma and Texas panhandle here as that strong low level jet behind that cold front uh, is gonna be very active uh, with some higher winds. So here's the temperatures uh, this morning. You can definitely see uh, they've got that prime atmosphere and that warm sector uh, to tap into that energy. So, I mean, we're talking anywhere from, you know, upper 60s, if not almost 70 degrees. These are your low temperatures. And these 60s just extend all the way up into Minnesota here, into Wisconsin, into, as well as uh, Michigan. So that's very warm uh, for you guys. So that's what we're dealing with. And back behind it, you can definitely see what that cold core loft and even some snow flew yesterday in Denver after they were 81 degrees the day before. So yeah, you can definitely tell this is a very uh, dynamic system that's gonna be heading our way. As we get into uh, later on this morning, into the afternoon, there's your cold front uh, later on this morning, as you can kind of see where it's going to be setting up and starting to get its act together right along uh, eastern uh, Oklahoma, getting into uh, eastern Texas here, and then some rain out ahead of the in that warm sector uh, into Missouri. And But as we continue uh, throughout the day, it's going to be creating some, uh, a more of a bow echo. And these will could be indicative of some, some very uh, straight line winds and some definitely higher 60 70 mile per hour wind gust and also that uh, tornado threat could be a little bit more prevalent uh, by then by the time we get into about three o'clock in the afternoon right around east texas getting into missouri here as well as uh, arkansas into louisiana as these storms really tap into that warm sector and in fact the storm prediction center is already elevated this risk to an enhanced risk from yesterday. So if you if you live in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, Jackson, Mississippi, Bossier City, uh, Louisiana, you're going to be under the gun for those uh, damaging winds, uh, large hail, and yes, even a tornado threat in that zone. And then even in Columbia, uh, Missouri, uh, getting into Longview, Jackson, Tennessee, Hattiesburg, Missis you know, Mississippi, Alexander, L Louisiana, you're still under that slight risk. So don't let your guard down there because you still have an active system. It's going to be looking at like a maybe kind of a, a nine hour window, basically from say three o'clock this afternoon into about uh, midnight tonight, where it's going to be prime atmosphere for those uh, higher wind gusts, uh, higher hailstones, and yes, that tornado threat. And as this continues uh, shifting off further to the uh, east here, as we get into the overnight hours, getting in to closer towards uh, you know Birmingham, Alabama area by tomorrow morning, these things will be significantly weaker than what they were prior, just uh, 12 hours before. So as we go throughout the day, like I mentioned, that tornado threat is going to be prevalent. So if you live in that zone that you have a 10% probability of a tornado within 25 miles of a given point. So that is a, a little bit of a significant threat. So definitely be lookout. There's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, twisting in the atmosphere, a lot of wind shear. Uh, these heights are, uh, you know, going to be splitting. And so that's going to be able to create uh, these stronger updrafts that's going to be needed for these possibly uh, tornadoes uh, as we get into uh, later on this afternoon you can definitely see the environment where what it's going to be tapping into as we get the, you know to the low 70s and the upper 60 dew points and portions of uh, Houston here Louisiana Mississippi get into Arkansas getting into Missouri here so you can definitely see where that warm sector and back behind it yeah that's their cold front there's your cold front about three o'clock this afternoon this afternoon so 30s dew points in Dallas and it just 70 
70s, you know, just just in East Texas, just another 100, 150 miles away. So that's going to be the difference where it's going to be high and dry in Dallas and then tornadic activity uh, possibly flying in uh, East Texas. So here's your 850 millibar uh, height wind speed anomalies. And you can definitely see that rotation, that split in the atmosphere. There's your updraft potential. So yeah, later on the day. So these are that zone where the Storm Prediction Center kind of highlighted. That is your strongest potential uh, for updraft and rotating thunderstorms. And you're going to be under that tornado threat essentially from three o'clock to about midnight as we go throughout the day. And here's your tornado parameter. Uh, it's fairly high. I mean, we're, we're hitting, you know, five and six in spots uh, right around Shreveport, Louisiana, getting into Little Rock, uh, getting into portions of, um, you know, Arkansas here as well as Louisiana. This is going to be your main sector and this will continue to shift uh, southeast and eventually get into uh, uh, Mississippi here as we go later on later on the day tonight. And eventually, like I mentioned, it'll kind of modify a lot as it continues uh, shifting off into uh, portions of Alabama uh, into the overnight hours. I mean, you can definitely see here the radar depiction uh, later on tonight where these storms are going to be essentially at uh, by around, you know, seven, eight, nine o'clock this evening. So where it kind of gives you an idea of where these, where this bow echo is going to be setting up and where the severe threat is going to be in, in uh, your area. But uh, yeah, like I mentioned, as these continue to shift uh, further off into the east, this is around 10 o'clock uh, Wednesday uh, night tonight. You can definitely see the supercell uh, threat is continued to modify a little bit as it shifts. And these are still going to be robust, but not nearly as, as big and strong as they could, you know, were going to be in uh, Arkansas into Missouri here, and especially like kind of in, in East Texas. But as we go into uh, the morning hours by Thursday, there's that line. It's going to be setting up over uh, portions of uh, Alabama by then by six o'clock in the morning. So and there there's still going to be some strong storms, but a less of a threat for that severe threat as you're still you're going to be transferring to more of a marginal risk threat as you get into uh, you know central Tennessee, getting into Kentucky here and portions of uh, Illinois. And especially as this moves off and continues lifting off into the east into uh, Alabama and there's your severe threat that marginal threat basically extends from New Orleans all the way into much of Alabama getting into the Atlanta Georgia area so like I mentioned these storms are going to be significantly weaker than what their former selves were going to be just to your west so uh, but you're still going to be having that uh, those stronger storms and some gustier winds just a less of a severe threat and here's your uh, 800 millibar uh, wind speed by uh, Thursday morning getting into the afternoon you can definitely see there's kind of a boundary here a lot of the a lot of like I said a lot of the rotation is not going to be prevalent a lot of westerly wind shear uh, is going to be keeping that tornado threat down so it's not even hardly a tornado threat as you get into uh, Alabama but it's going to kind of set up a boundary here with that uh, cold front lifting to the north and that's going to create and you can actually kind of see the dew points here where this boundary would lie there's your cold front but then that warm front will be kind of backing up and right in this zone from houston to uh, southern portions of louisiana southern portions of uh, alabama getting into georgia here you could be picking up some some very heavy rain as we go into the day uh, on Thursday, in the latest um, you know radar index from the NAM 3K model, kind of depicts that where it's going to be tapping into some of those higher dew points so right along that boundary there. You could have some flooding flooding rains uh, setting up in portions of uh, New Orleans, getting into the southern portions of uh, Mississippi and Alabama, and especially as you get into uh, possibly the Florida Panhandle. So this area is going to be under the gun even on Thursday, not the, from the severe threat, but possibly heavy rain rains and uh, some, some flooding rains at times in, in isolated spots. But here's the setup on Friday. I mean, this this kind of the atmosphere kind of like what they call reloads and resets. And we have another dynamic piece that's going to be coming in from the West and out ahead of it. Man, you're talking some very warm, if not hot uh, temperatures all the way down in South Texas. I mean, some of these plots over 100 degrees. I mean, uh, Laredo, Texas could possibly reach 106 degrees on Friday. And that warm surge with that south wind is going 
going to tap into and create all that instability in the upper levels. And also, we have a secondary cold front that's going to be moving in as well. And that's going to create yet another uh, severe threat that's going to be extending a little bit further west. That's going to be starting essentially into the Dallas Fort Worth area. So, yeah, by the time we get to six o'clock on Friday uh, afternoon, Right along uh, basically east of I-35 here, we could be looking at a significant threat for very large hail, uh, possibly setting up with that very cold core loft that's going to be coming in from the north. And I think the cap does, that cold front helps the cap weaken, that warm air loft weaken, and the, rot the, the atmosphere will turn over, creating that uh, large hail threat that I'm looking at and possibly would be east, uh, uh, you know, uh, east of the I-35 corridor as this continues uh, to shift off. So it's going to have a very warm south wind to work with. So I do feel by the time we get to about, you know, four or five o'clock in the afternoon, we could be looking at uh, some severe thunderstorms firing right along the dry line um, out in West Texas and then entering the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And in fact, the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted a significant severe threat for a hatched risk area in the Dallas Fort Worth area. This is the first time they've actually seen it this season. So if you live in Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, Plano, and Garland, you're going to be under the gun for that very lar large, if not very large hill, as the atmosphere would be capable of producing two inch plus diam diameter hail and into the Dallas Fort Worth area. And that uh, slight risk extends all the way into East Texas, into Louisiana again, little in, into Little Rock and Mississippi again, and going to portions of Alabama. This is your Friday threat. So as the atmosphere uh, reloads, getting down into Houston. So you do have a significant hail threat. Uh, you know, damaging wind threat and the tornado threat is very low with this particular system as this continues moving off into the east. But look at your Cape values. Yeah, we're approaching, you know, 2,500, if not up to three or 4,000. I do feel down further to the south, we're going to have that cap that's going to be holding the keeping the storms at bay. But I do feel with that uh, from the cold front, from the north into the Dallas Worth area, that's going to be enough to weaken the cap and allow, allow the atmosphere to turn over and creating those uh, larger hailstones in and around the Dallas area. And that will co continue to shift off into uh, East Texas as we go into the uh, later into the evening hours on uh, Friday. And look at your flash index. I mean, and this is about uh, three, four o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah, this is definitely implying that right along that uh, dry line, that's going to be have that storm initiation right along into portions of West Texas, extending into the Dallas Fort Worth area as it really kind of gets its act together, uh, taking advantage of all that daytime and heating. And then as we shift off and go into Saturday morning now around 6 a.m., all that severe threat will continue to shift off a little bit further off to the east. Now that'll be setting up over uh, Arkansas and getting into Mississippi and Alabama and western Tennessee again. So these a lot of these same areas will be under the gun with another uh, severe threat as we continue to shift off into uh, Saturday afternoon, creating yet another bow echo with some stronger uh, straight line winds uh, setting up for Illinois uh, into Indiana, getting into uh, you know por portions of uh, uh, the panhandle of Florida here, getting into uh, Alabama, going into the Georgia area, uh, Kentucky and Tennessee as well, as those stronger severe storms will continue shifting off uh, to the east. And in fact, the Storm Prediction Center, even on day four now, which would be Saturday for this particular system on April the 10th. Yeah, these these uh, that could be under the gun in Mobile, Alabama, uh, getting into uh, just south of Birmingham area, getting into Columbus. So in the, in the in the Florida panhandle here could be under the gun for that uh, slight risk so for severe weather. And whenever they issue something like this four days out, yeah, I greatly just you know imagine this would be also increased uh, to possibly an, another enhanced risk as we get closer uh, to the event. So we have a very uh, active uh, the next uh, three or four days to be talking about. And by the time we get into Sunday, these storms do tend to modify a little bit. 
as they continue to shift off into uh, the north, into the east, get it into uh, uh, portions of the Mid-Atlantic, going to the Pennsylvania now, into upstate New York. And this will eventually uh, shift off the coast and back behind it. You can definitely see that colder air. That was your morning temperatures on Sunday uh, the 11th here. And back behind that colder air, that's going to be all clear, cl kind of clearing the atmosphere out. So by Sunday, getting into Sunday afternoon, this will eventually shift off, uh, off the coast of the east coast there and finally kind of clear things out and calm things down uh for the week but we got a lot to deal with between now and then between wednesday and essentially getting into sunday sunday afternoon you can definitely see where your drier zone is and you know oregon to california much of the south southwest here and um but all your actions essentially going to be from the central u.s into the south east here with some very heavy rain getting into uh you know minnesota here into iowa getting into illinois and indiana but some definitely some heavier rain if not flooding rain down here into uh, louisiana mississippi and alabama here as well as uh, western uh, tennessee and western kentucky and then uh, getting into portions of uh, georgia as well and then florida they definitely need some rain but um they're gonna not get nearly as much as you know guys in the in the southeast so yeah it's definitely something you got to be definitely keeping weather aware for the next uh, three or four days it looks like a very uh active time frame so i appreciate you guys uh watching uh do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm